Good morning. It's Monday and we have a lot of field work to do today. So the plan for Mark and I is that we're starting here. We um, just prepped these two more beds. They're going to be seated to arugula and we're going to turn over some beds in the front yard and then we're going to be at two other plots, well hopefully two today. We'll take you guys on a tour of some of the action that's happening this morning. That's coming up next on The Urban Farmer. This is the new Greens washing station. I'll show you guys more about that as we figure it out, but it works. Washed uh, about 30, 40 pounds of greens last night, went really quickly. So, pretty stoked, but we'll, we'll have more on that later. Before we leave this site today, we gotta do a few things. Mark is soaking seeds for microgreens that will be planted on Wednesday, so we can soak them and then drain and rinse them tonight, and then we can just kind of rinse them for a day or two, and that buys us time. I've talked about this before, but it buys us time so we don't have to plant them right away, and so that's been allowing us to do it on Wednesdays. Because Mondays and Tuesdays are our busiest days on the farm, as of now, and Wednesdays is kind of a time where we have a little bit more time to do other things. So, we've been always soaking them on Mondays, and we just haven't been getting around to it until Wednesdays, and so now I'm just kind of accepting that, okay, Wednesdays is fine. But before we leave today, we gotta pick these patty pans here and next door, and then turn over some beds in the front yard here. Right now, we are going to turn over some of these beds and replant them right away. So this mustard has been cut twice already. It's already starting to go to seed. You can see the little, little flower heads coming along there, so it's done. We're gonna shank that out, plant that to cilantro. I'm also going to cut out half of this bed of cilantro. It's not entirely finished, but I'm probably just gonna leave, just cut it in half, pull this one out, turn that over, plant that to, what was it gonna be, parsley, I believe. Then I'm going to take out half of this charred bed. So I made a video on, on short beds that'll come out. Well, actually it already came out. <laughs> Let's start, let me start that again. Okay, go like this. So this bed of chard, I'm gonna take half of it out because no, I don't need this much even. And then I'm gonna replant the other half to cilantro. Okay, so basically, since we just cropped this out to turn it over, we just also harvested. So two birds with one stone did a task. And then we've also got two big totes of chard to sell later this week. Okay, just got my bed of radish planted. I was gonna do it arugula, decided to do it radish. This will be arugula, except I'm waiting on seeds still. So I planted, I planted double the amount of arugula this year than I have in previous years and what I expected to, mainly because of one chef. He, um, he wants like 50 to 80 pounds a week. So he's been taking most of what my expected production would be. So I've had to almost double my plantings and uh, so I'm out, so I got more seed coming. Hopefully it arrives today or tomorrow so that I can keep on with my normal planting schedule. Um, Mark is picking patty pans right now and that bed is planted. Beds in the front are turned over. They haven't been planted yet, but they will be shortly. Before we can get out of here, I'm going to harvest this bed of red Russian kale because it's perfect. It's not that I need it right now, it's just that it's perfect and it's uh, why I'm going to harvest it. It's still got a bit of morning dew on it, which is nice. And, uh, you know, I've talked about this before, guys, but it's really about harvesting things when you need them. Or, for, sorry. It's really about harvesting things when they're ready, not when you need them. Because when they're ready, perfect size, and the temperature's good, that makes your product more consistent and allows you to sell it better and more often as well as you get more time to regenerate. So because I'm harvesting this on a Monday opposed to a Thursday, 
that means I might be able to get a second cut of this before the week is even over, so that's good. Mark and I are just planting in these short beds what we took out, putting in some, he's putting in some beet greens right now where that mustard bed was. I'm gonna put cilantro where the chard was. And uh, actually know what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do a very short cilantro and parsley split bed here. And then where that cilantro was, I'm going to put mustard. Mark just took off to go and prep some more beds and plant a couple beds at another site. He took the truck with all the gear. I stuck behind to fix my greens harvester. What I did on this thing is I bent the axle here because this stupid thing for a while uh, was too short and it was always coming off. So there was a period of time where we, where we were running the greens harvester without it being stuck on here. We're kind of just letting it move around. That's not a good idea because it'll torque this axle rod in um, because you're moving it around. And so our drill had a slight wobble and it's made it loosen off over time. So it's annoying. So I had to replace the axle. Good thing that the guys at Farmer's Friend are on the ball and they ship fast. Even for me, I'm on the opposite side of the continent. This came here in like three days, so big ups to those guys. Again, if you want more info, if you want to buy this thing, link is below on the show notes. Um, it's a fantastic tool, but you know, sometimes shit happens and you gotta replace things like this. So no big deal, but I'm just gonna sit, um, put this back together before I head back out in the field. I'm just coming back from doing some banking and now I'm going to slide into one of our downtown plots here, check in. Mark is out doing bed prep. I've spent about the last three hours troubleshooting that greens harvester, pretty frustrating. I think I got it sorted out though. Uh, I mean, the machine is great. There, there's no denying that. It's just, when it comes to servicing them yourself, there are some uh, kinks that they need to sort out and I'm sure that they will. Um, but yeah, I mean, really the, the solution for somebody like myself who does as many greens as uh, we do, I should probably just have two machines. I sold my uh, first one, which I'm already starting to regret a little bit. It would have been nice to have it today. Anyways, I'm just here checking in on this plot, see what we've got going on. Okay, the spinach is ready for another cut. I'll cut it tomorrow and then I'll turn it under. Bed's turning into a bed of purse lane. Maybe I'll harvest that too. Salanova looking here that was planted last week is looking okay. There's a couple spots that didn't make it that we can fix. I always have extra plugs that we can, that we can pop in there to patch up any missed spots. So we'll definitely do that. This bed is gonna be, these two beds will be good to harvest by Wednesday or Thursday. Probably leave it, try to leave it till Thursday. We've got enough greens right now to meet everything this early week. And um, we'll probably turn over this bed of Red Russian pretty quick as well. Just flipped on the manual for that just to get some more water on that freshly planted lettuce. Coming into the greenhouse here, we're in full force with our tomatoes, lots of ox hearts, lots of Sakura, lots of black cherry, lots of sunrise. Also got our San Marzano's coming in as well. We only do a few San Marzano's just for ourselves, basically just for canning. So just here really quick and uh, going to 
quickly harvest these two beds of arugula. These are already on, they're on a five day recovery right now. I think I harvested these on Wednesday last week, so that's super fast. I'm gonna cut this bed of red Russian again, same thing, just as fast of recovery. Mark is harvesting some turnips, and these carrots are doing really well, which is nice to see. Our salanova at this plot is not doing well. I don't understand what's happening. Um, I mean, we've got better success than what was the last batch we planted in there, but we had some other ones that got a little bit of fried as well, so kind of um, a little bit worried about that. Anyways, these are things that, you know, shit happens. You gotta figure it out, so we'll wait until it cools down until we plant again in there. Okay, so I didn't film the drone because I just had to do this real quick because it's getting hot out. It's already 32 degrees Celsius, so I just harvested these two beds of arugula really, really quick. And um, so that's a five day recovery from the last harvest. And I got about three quarters the amount. So la that last one I got four totes full at about 15 each. So that was about 60 pounds. I'm thinking I've got about 45 here. So you can see that there's slightly diminishing returns on the second harvest. Third harvest, I'll be lucky to get a third one. I bet you I could probably cut it again by Friday and it will be starting to go to seed then and I won't expect much on that harvest. But hey, you know what? On those two beds, if I got 45 pounds, let's just say 40 pounds here, 60 pounds before, 10 bucks a pound, I've already got $1,000 off two 50 foot beds, so 100 feet. One crop, I'll get at least one more, if not two more crops in those beds before season's end. So I just cut this bed of red Russian kale for the second time and one tote, half the harvest. So same thing, it's a slight diminishing returns, more so than the arugula, I think. That only feels like maybe 10 pounds. So that bed will get stirrup hoed right away or just tarped, we don't need it immediately. So I'm out of here, I gotta get this stuff back. I splashed a bit of water on in these greens, so I'm gonna load the bike trailer and get back quick and get these in the cooler. So I'm out of there. I'm taking the turnips Mark, Mark harvested. He got two, two macro totes of turnips. That's probably about 20 pounds each, so about 40 pounds of turnips. Got about 40 pounds of arugula and about 10 pounds of red Russian kale. So that's the haul that I'm taking back. And Mark's gonna spend the rest of the day there just finishing up those beds. He's gonna turn over that bed of red Russian that I harvested because it's toast. So two, two cuts and it's done. And then he's going to uh, just do some maintenance stuff around there. He's got to uh, put on some fabrics for Salanova that we're gonna plant hopefully tomorrow, perhaps Wednesday, we'll see. And uh, then he's gonna do some forking around in, that be in those beds. We've got some quack grass that's creeping in on the side, so. He's gonna fix that up. Back here at the farm base and just submerging these turnips in some water to cool them down and make them easier to clean. Got everything in the cooler labeled and weighed out. I was a little off on the arugula, ended up getting 32 pounds off those two beds, so we're actually just a little over half of the yield from the first cut which is fine, so if I get a, a, you know, I get a third cut, great. If I don't, we still made 900 bucks on those two 50-foot beds from one crop, so that's pretty good. Red Russian, I got, where are we here? Eight pounds from that, that bed that was a second cut, so it's definitely time to turn that one under. The rest of my day on the farm is going to be spent washing these turnips and sorting out my carrots. So we, we harvested a ton of carrots last week, in fact two weeks worth. So I'm gonna take these out of these totes here and I'm going to dump them into bigger totes like this. The reason is, is now I wanna keep some of the moisture in. So I originally put it in those macro totes to after they were washed to, to dry them off a bit. Now I wanna keep the moisture in. If I left them in those macro totes, for another week, they would get soft. So I wanna keep them nice and crisp for our customers. All right, I've sorted out my carrots, washed some of my turnips, gonna come back and wash more, but right now I'm going to go and meet a chef at 
our downtown plot, our main downtown plot besides our house, where we're hosting a, a Field the Fork dinner this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Don't ask me the details because it's already sold out. Two nights sold out in, first one sold out in 20 minutes, second one sold out in, I think, around the same. Uh, first, after the first one sold out, we decided to add another day. So I'm gonna go meet Julio and we're going to just talk about some of the logistics of this dinner. All right, I'm here with my, my good buddy Julio and we are just planning out the dinner. We're gonna have it here in front of the, uh, in front of the farm. Tell us what is gonna be happening, Julio. Uh, it's gonna be a lovely one bit table here at Curtis Farm, right downtown Colona. Uh, the idea behind the dinner is to meet the person that is growing your food. Uh, because that helps con close the cycle into uh, being local and the idea of being local. Yeah, and so Julio is basically going to give me, uh, he hasn't finished the menu yet, but he's going to give me a list of all the product needs and so all the veg for the event will come from our farm. Is that right? That's right, yeah. It's a farm, inverted farm to table. It's the table goes to the farm. The table goes to the farm. So that's going to be this weekend. And I'd love to say there was tickets available, guys, but there isn't. We're sold out. Sold out already. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ciao. Okay, guys. Well, that is the day. You got to meet Julio there. Looking forward to that event on Friday or Saturday and Sunday. That's going to be a blast. So I'm done for the day. Mark's done for the day. Hope you guys enjoyed that stuff. If you want to see more stuff like this, hit the subscribe button right now. Please like and share the videos with your friends. Hi, Linda. And check out my online course, ProfitableUrbanFarming.com, my book at TheUrbanFarmer.co. If you guys want to make a donation to the show, it is very much appreciated and always welcome. You can do that at TheUrbanFarmer.co slash support. All right, thanks for watching.